Hello everyone, this is your educator Priyanka Thakur. I'm teaching you life sciences. I welcome you all on our YouTube channel Guru Mantra Shikshaka Granth. Today in this video we are going to talk about DNA supercoiling, RNA and its types. Okay, so in my previous video I saw I have given you a question. I think uh, it was a day uh, before today. Okay, but uh, a very few students replied on that a video i want more and more students to participate so that we can get more and more views and we get energy from your comments from your likes uh, you know what when other people used to say the same line i used to think oh they are just saying uh, they are just not uh, telling the truth they are lying and all but no today i can feel nobody lies actually we actually get energy from your replies your likes and everything okay so please keep motivating keep supporting us so let's talk about DNA supercoiling and RNA and its type. Uh, in my previous video, I have covered the nucleotide, uh, the sugar puckers, the rotation of nitrogenous base and everything. And today we will be talking about DNA supercoiling and RNA and its types. Let's start from the DNA supercoiling. So what is DNA supercoiling? Supercoiling means over and underwinding of DNA. If a DNA is being underwound, it is called a supercoil. If it is overwound, it is again a supercoil DNA. It is actually the expression of strain on that DNA strand. On a particular DNA strand, the supercoiling is an expression of the strain. Now, what do you understand by strain? So, uh, strain is actually the change in the shape of an object when stress is applied on it. Okay, you get it? Strain is a change in the shape of an object when stress is applied over it okay so supercoiling can be seen in circular as well as in linear dna we can see the supercoiling in both type of dna either it is a supercoil either it is a circular dna or a linear dna a supercoil dna is the one in which the double helix is further twisted over itself forming the supercoil structure okay supercoiling this is a helix okay see the structure carefully this is a circular double stranded dna uh, this is a helix okay and this is the super helix this helix has further been twisted over itself so this is a super helix this is a helix and this is a super helix not the circular one actually check so if there is no net bending of dna upon itself then dna is in relaxed state if there is no net bending of dna upon itself it is said to be in relaxed state. Did you get me? If there is no net bending, see, there will be coiling uh, in the DNA strands as well as among the DNA itself. Remember this, okay? There is a coiling among DNA strand and as well as DNA itself, okay? When the DNA is twisted over itself, it has been coiled over itself, it is called as supercoiled DNA. When there is no bending of DNA upon itself, it is in relaxed state get it if b dna has 10.4 or 10 base pairs uh, in its relaxed state see okay uh, how many b dna base pairs are there 10.4 or generally we say there are 10 base pairs are present in the relaxed state of the dna 10 base pairs per turn we are not saying that there are only 10.4 or 10 base pairs in the whole dna which is in relaxed state it's not like that there are 10.4 actually in many of the books you read 10.4 and in general that you are reading from your 11th standard or 12th standard and it's 10 base pairs so you can remember 10.4 base pairs or you may also read 10.5 in some books but not 10.6 okay so but if the number of base pairs increases or decreases from 10.4 or 10 base pair per ton then it is known as supercoil dna it means if the normal if the the, if the general number of base pair which are present in one turn of the dna uh, is 10 or 10.4 or 10 if there is an increase or decrease in the number of base pair per ton from 10.4 then uh, it is called as a supercoil dna okay see we will see the two types of supercoiling remember this structure this is a supercoil dna there have you seen uh, the uh, older uh, telephones which were having a coiled wire 
okay the boy was coiled and uh, if you uh, put some stress it will be coiled again and again and you will see a such kind of structure this is what actually i am trying to tell you okay this is the wire which is coiled already okay but there are two strands okay which are coiled and this double uh, dub, this helical structure will again uh, wound to itself this is what we call super coil there can be two types of super coilings it may be a positive super coiling or negative one what happen in positive super coiling in this case the dna is actually overwound dna what happens if dna is overwound the dna will have more base pairs per turn as compared to the dna in the relaxed state it means the base pair number will increase from 10.4 for example if the number of base pair increases from 10.4 to 11.5 or 11.8 it is a positively supercoiled dna so what you have to remember in positively supercoiled dna the dna actually overbounds and the number of base pair per turn increases as compared to the dna in the relaxed state so the more the number of base pairs are introduced in dna the dna turns in a left handed direction it supercoils in the left handed direction remember this point also you know, when the, the uh, there is supercoiling uh, i mean there is positive supercoiling in dna the dna turns toward left handed direction okay then what happen in negative super coil such a dna is underworn uh, we uh, read it uh, in our previous or uh, not in previous video actually we just read it that uh, so in super coiling dna can be overwound or it can be underwound so dna is overwound in case of positive super coiling but it is underwound in case of negative super coiling in negative supercoiling there are fewer base pairs per turn as compared to the dna in the relaxed state for example if the number of base pair decreases from the 10.4 to 9.4 it is called a negatively supercoiled dna okay but what if the number of supercoils uh, number of base pairs per turn increases from 10.4 to uh, 10.8 then it is positively supercoiled dna whenever there is increase in the number of base pair it is positively supercoiled dna when it, there, whenever there is a decrease in the number of base pairs per turn it is negatively supercoiled dna but you have to compare the number of base pair from uh, the number of base pair that are present in the uh, part uh, that are present in the relaxed state of dna and you have to see it in per turn not in the whole dna now what does negative supercoiling do it helps the overwound dna to return its original pro, uh, position and regain its right handed helix which is more stable okay so negative supercoiling can uh, it can relax it can relax the positively supercoiled dna and it will help the positively supercoiled dna which has been turned into left handed direction to regain its position to regain its right handed helix so, so as we know in our cells the dna is right handed helix okay so what type of coiling is found in our do, uh, dna either it is positive supercoiling or negative supercoiling dna in the cell is maintained in an underwound state it means the dna that is present in our cell is a negatively supercoiled dna what kind of dna is there negatively supercoiled dna is there now you understand the concept of supercoiling okay you understand what is supercoiling you understand what is uh, positive supercoiling do you understand what is negative supercoiling isn't there any problem if i say the number of base pair increases from 10 to 12 what it what it will be what will it be it will it will be a positive supercoiling and what if the number of uh, uh, base pairs per turn decreases from 10.4 it will be a negative supercoiling and our dna is an uh, underwound state it is actually negatively supercoiled it is a right handed helix it is a right handed structure now so it is an underwound state next come the linking number now what is this linking number it is actually the mathematical expression of supercoiling in dna it is the mathematical expression of supercoiling in dna we are studying the supercoiling in dna so we must be knowing about the linking number so linking number is actually the mathematical expression of supercoiling in dna 
now uh, how we define a linking number it is defined as the time of uh, it is defined as the number of times that the two strands of a closed circular double helical molecule cross each other okay so uh, we see how many times a, a closed circular dna it must be uh, double stranded dna how many times it crosses each other you have seen the diagram the first diagram i have shown you i told you to see that diagram carefully did you did you see that carefully you saw that there are uh, the dna helixes twisting over itself this is what we call uh, this is what we call super very super coiled structure okay so linking number is also defined as the number of times that two strands of a close circular double helical molecule cross each other okay how many times the two strands of close circular double helical molecules are crossing each other this is what we call linking number it is the sum of twist and wreath what twist and wreath now what is twist it is the number of times one strand of dna turns around other Twist is the number of times one strand of DNA turns around other. Okay, now let me show you with the help of the pen. I'm not having actually a digital pen right now, so I apologize for it. But uh, I will definitely try to show you. Okay, fine. See, this is a circular DNA. Okay, this is a circular DNA. One strand, and uh, this is the other strand. Okay, so uh, the, uh, these are the two strands of circular DNA. and there will be a super coiling among these two strand one strand will be coiling over the other this is we call the twist and twist is the number of times one strand of dna turns around the other now uh, again go to the first diagram there you see this structure will again wound okay so that is called we call that the number of this uh, wreath wreath is the number of time double helix crosses i hope now you understand that Uh, that uh, what is wreath and what is twist twist is the number of times one strand of dna uh, turns around other and wreath is the number of times double helix crosses so mathematical expression for this is the lk equals tw plus wr so lk is a linking number tw is a twist number and wr is the wreath number so you get it now uh, and i hope you are not having any problem in understanding this concept now so this is all about super coiling this is all about positive super coil negative super coil twist number wreath number but what does next what about next so in relaxed state in relaxed state the linking number will be equal to the twist number definitely a t a a DNA is in relaxed state, but it will definitely have one strand coiled over the other. Won't it be? It will have the one strand coiled over the other. At that time, the linking number will be equal to the twist number because there are actually no wreath uh, numbers you can see because there is no twisting of double helix over itself. Okay, so there will be uh, no wreath number. You won't see any wreath. so there will be zero wreath number and linking number will be equal to twist number linking l k not are the linking numbers at relaxed state which is n by 10.4 now what is this n n is the number of base pairs in the dna molecule n is the total number of base pairs in the dna molecule the whatever may be the number of total base pairs but n is the total number of base pairs in the dna molecule and what is the 10.4 it is the number of molecule present in one turn of the dna molecule uh, for negatively super coiled dna the linking number is less than the linking number at relaxed state so the change in linking number will be negative why right? for positively super coiled dna the linking number is greater than the linking number at relaxed state so change delta lk represent the change in the linking number so delta lk is positive for super uh, positively super coiled dna and there comes a term super helical density it is the quantitative measure of the intensity of super coiling remember the definition what is a super helical uh, density is it is the quantitative measure of the intensity of super coiling uh, you can uh, it can be expressed as sigma super helical density is represented by sigma equals delta lk upon delta uh, no delta but lk not 
adult alk means change in the linking number upon linking number it relaxed state so super helical density can be measured by the following expression here uh, by uh, which is change in linking number upon uh, linking number at relaxed state super helical density is telling you again change in linking number upon linking number at relaxed state please please listen to these things carefully i'll be taking your test most probably on sunday so uh, uh, remember all these things what i'm teaching you right now so that you will be able to do the question that i'm going to give you in the mcq session okay for prokaryotes and eukaryotes the value of n is equal to minus 0.6 the value of sigma actually the value of sigma for prokaryotes and eukaryotes is minus 0.6 how much minus 0.6 fine okay ethidium bromide ethidium bromide can stain the dna and it can intercalate the, the stacking of bases and relaxes the dna what happened there are adenine going in and uh, cytosine thi i mean adenine thymine and going in cytosine so uh, it uh, like you, you are there and your friend is there someone else come in between you it's like that ethidium bromide uh, intercalates the uh, stacking bases it uh, come in between the uh, bases one base pair it comes in between the base pairs actually one is adenine thymine and the one is going in cytosine it will come in between them and will intercalate them fine then the dna will be relaxed so ethidium bromide it intercalates the stacking of the bases and relaxes the dna dna supercoils can be removed by phosphodiesterases definitely you have to remember it dna supercoiling is a very important uh, topic to remember for the dna application you will be uh, learning in dna application as well that phosphodiesterases are responsible for the removal of dna supercoils there are two types of phosph phosphodiesterases that uh, you generally study one is the phosphodiesterase one and other one is phosphodiesterase two phosphodiesterase 2 has the ability to uh, remove two supercoils at the same time but phosphodiesterase can remove only one supercoils there you also got to know about the positive and negative supercoiling that's why i told you about uh, positive and super uh, negative supercoiling as well okay i want to clear your basics first before starting the, those main topics so this is all about supercoiling now let's start with the rna your ribose nucleic acid which is an in biologically important molecule present in the cell it is uh, as important as our dna okay you cannot uh, uh, take it for granted okay so it is principally involved in the synthesis of uh, proteins plus it carry the messenger instruction from the dna it is uh, that friend of dna <laughs> who used to convey messages okay you have seen uh, this thing in pictures like hero uh, give messages to his friend and uh, ask him to convey to his other friend or either to his girlfriend or someone else okay either even to his enemy okay so uh, messenger uh, uh, rna rna can act as that friend also so it also act as a genetic material in many viruses most of the cases mostly we see generally we see that rna is a single stranded molecule we see it in a single stranded form in our um, in our body okay in our body there is a mechanism that uh, the double stranded molecule of dna can't be seen there are dicers dicer complexes which cut the double stranded dna you will know about this dicer and all in our further videos Okay, the single stranded uh, structure of RNA allows this molecule to fold back on itself and form various secondary structures as necessary. Okay, secondary structures of the RNA are very important. You have uh, learned uh, about you have learned about the tRNA, uh, the secondary structure of tRNA, which is clover leaf-like structure. So, the single stranded structure of uh, RNA allow it to uh, get assembled into the secondary and tertiary structures. Okay. RNA can be a genetic or non-genetic. It can be catalytic like ribozyme. Ribozymes are the one which are having the RNA, enzymes which are having the RNA. 
or non catalytic and uh, it may be coding or non coding coding uh, like mrna and non coding like rna and trna there are also other kind of rna like small nuclear rna small nuclear rna uh, micro rna uh, micro rna and a uh, small interference rna resistant all we will learn about these uh, in our further uh, videos so types of rna mostly includes rna mrna and trna these are three main types of rna we will be knowing about these pashkamna rna it is a type of non coding rna it is a type of non coding rna and is the primary component of ribosome it act as a ribozyme remember our rna act as a ribozyme it can be catalytic okay it acts as a ribozyme and move along the mrna okay it move along the rna and catalyze the assembly of amino acids into protein chains remember this thing our rna can act as a ribozyme it move along the mrna and catalyze the assembly of amino acid into protein chains okay so it it it, uh, it uh, move along mrna and uh, gather all the amino acids okay uh, and fit uh, ask them to come together and form the protein chains there are four types of rrna present in the ats ribosome of uk you know that there are two types of uh, ribosomes uh, like uh, ats in eukaryotes and 70s in prokaryotes ats uh, is formed of two subunit and 70s uh, as uh, is also formed of two subunits as well like ats is having 60s and 40s subunit while 70s is having a 50s and 30s subunit so in ads there are uh, four types of rrna these are 28s 18s 5.8s and uh, 5s all these three rrna are produced in the nucleolus of the nucleus and as a 5s rrna is uh, produced outside the nucleus okay except 5s uh, okay you know remember this thing only the 5s rna is being produced outside the nucleus and all are produced inside the nucleus okay the prokaryotic uh, 70s ribosome have only three types of rna which are 23s 16s and 5s rna fine our rna then associated with proteins to form a ribosome how a ribosome is formed it is formed by the association of our rna plus ribosome along with this these rrnas like 20s rrna 18s rrna 5.8s rna and 5s rna there will be some proteins which will associate along with these our rnas and help in the formation of ribosomes so ribosomes are formed when there is association of our rna and proteins 60s and 50s subunit possesses catalytic activity actually the 20s rna of 60s subunit and 23s rna of 50s subunit they are having the catalytic activity in the form of peptidyl transferase enzyme which is responsible for the formation of peptide bond ats of 40s subunit 40s is a small subunit of uh, ats chromosome and 60s of 30s subunit these help in the correct positioning of mrna and peptidyl trna all these things are going to help you to understand the concept of translation to understand the process of translation so ribosome will be having the three main site p site a site and uh, e site p site is the site where the peptide bond uh, for formation uh, occurs peptide it is a peptidyl trna binding site okay so a uh, peptide chain will bind to the trna okay trna will also be having an amino acid and all the peptide chain will be transferred to that trna and will bind to that uh, amino acid which is present on the trna a site is the one where the new trna comes with a new amino acid and e site is the site uh, from which the empty dna moves away the it takes an exit when it is deacylated okay so next comes the mrna the friend of dna okay who can convey the messages of dna but it carries the information in coded form uh, it is not that cheat friend cheating friend who cheats over his friend it is the loyal one okay it carries the information in coded form messenger rna is a single stranded rna uh, molecule that is complementary to one of the dna strand of a gene we know that it must be complementary to one of the dna strand like uh, if our dna is having a u g uh, one dna strand is having the a u g 
then uh, the, this messenger RNA will have uh, U, T, C, complementary base pairing. Now, so mRNA can be monocystronic or polycystronic. What is a monocystronic mRNA? When uh, an mRNA have information for only one gene, it is called as monocystronic DNA, which is usually seen in the eukaryotic mRNA. Okay, which is uh, eukaryotic mRNA is actually the monocystronic mRNA. Why? Polycystronic mRNA have information for more than one gene and prokaryotic mRNA is actually the polycystronic mRNA. Monocystronic, only one gene. Polycystronic, information of many genes. All the mRNAs, either a prokaryotic or eukaryotic, all the mRNAs consist of a coding reason and untranslated reason. So, coding reason and untranslated reason are present in both type of mRNA. Like either it is of prokaryotes and of eukaryotes. So, coding reason, it will consist of codons starting with the start codon and stop with the stop codon. So, so starting codon is AUG. You have to tell me which one is the stop codon. Fine. You have to comment in the comment section. I asked you a question in the, my previous video, but most of the students did not answer that question. So I want you to please answer that, answer the questions. Okay. It will motivate me to do more and more for you. And I will definitely do it for you. Uh, the UTR reason, there is an untranslated reason. So the untranslated reason towards 5 prime end is called ladder sequence while the untranslated reason toward the 3 prime end is called the trailer sequence fine so ladder sequence and trailer sequence are nothing but actually the untranslated reason of the mrna uh, ladder sequence will be present toward the 5 prime end and uh, the trailer sequence will be present toward the 3 prime end unlike prokaryotic mrna Eukaryotic mRNA has 5 prime cap which is recognized by ribosome and a poly A tail. Okay, so pro eukaryotic uh, mRNA will have a 5 prime cap and a poly A tail. The 5 prime cap is recognized by the ribosome while the prokaryotic mRNA does not have this 5 prime cap and also doesn't have that a poly A tail usually. Okay, instead of 5 prime cap, mainly remember that it is not having the 5 prime cap. Prokaryotic mRNA no, doesn't have 5 prime ca uh, cap, then what? What uh, they have? What do they have? They have Schindelgano sequence. Instead of 5 prime cap in prokaryotic mRNA, they have a multiple binding sites called Schindelgano sequence AGG, AGGU, which is being recognized by the ribosomes. Okay. Okay, this is all about mRNA. Here are the structure of prokaryotic mRNA and eukaryotic mRNA. You can see there is a, a cap. 5 prime cap in case of eukaryotic mRNA which is lacking in the prokaryotic mRNA. It is having the information for many proteins. Okay. 1, 2, 3. It is having the information of only one protein. Like it can uh, have the uh, code of only one gene. Okay. It is monocystronic. Eukaryotic mRNA is monocystronic. So they start with the start codon and end with the stop codon. So instead of 5 prime cap, they are having the Shin Delgano sequence. This is the poly A tail also lacking in the prokaryotic mRNA. And this is the untranslated reason 5 prime to 5 prime uh, uh, prokaryotic mRNA also having the 5 prime UTR reason and 3 prime UTR reason toward 5 prime. It is leader sequence toward 3 prime and it is a uh, trailer sequence. This is all about mRNA and this is our last R uh, RNA which is tRNA. Transfer RNA also known as adapter RNA and also known as soluble RNA, one of the smallest RNA, okay. It is a small RNA that plays an important role in the protein synthesis, okay. All the RNA are pro, uh, RNAs are playing an important role in the protein synthesis. Now you got to know how important, how important is RNA for our cell. Most of the function won't be able to, to uh, uh, cell won't be able to perform its function if there is no RNA. So RNA is a biologically important molecule, macromolecule actually. The other thing, may, many of you won't be knowing that this tRNA also acts as primer during reverse transcription in retrovirus cycle. So this RNA also help in what? Uh, ret reverse transcription in retroviruses. AIDS is also a retrovirus and this tRNA acts as a primer. 
it is present in the cytosol okay remember that uh, your rna is formed in the nucleus of the nucleus mrna is also produced inside the nucleus but get transported uh, transferred uh, to the cytosol during protein synthesis but trna is present in the cytosol so trna was discovered by holly and his coworker in 1965 Uh, all of the trna are having a secondary structure like a clover leaf like structure and the three dimensional form uh, look like l shaped structure clover leaf like structure has well defined stems and loops like an acceptor arm d stem and uh, loop anticodon stem and loop variable arm you will see the acceptor arm the acceptor arm has seven base pair and four single stranded nucleotides uh whenever there are seven base pairs remember there will be 14 nucleotides and if there are no base pairs there are only four single stranded nucleotides so it has the except arm it has a conserved sequence cca sequence it has an hydroxyl group and it act as a site of amino acid attachment you also have to remember it that trna trna molecule has a an acceptor arm which has a conserved cca sequence and that sequence that arm act as the site of attachment of amino acid okay the trna will be bringing the amino acid for the formation of proteins so you have to remember it this is the structure of trna see this is a d loop this is a t loop this is the variable arm this is the anticodon loop see anticodon loop will have anticodon for mrna codon fine and this is the amino acid there will be present c c a don't read it as a c c but it's c c a four nucleotides which are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 base pairs are there and four nucleotides are present four nuclei which are not forming any base pairs fine this is the amino acid c c a trna is acceptor stem acceptor arm has an amino acid binding site the variable arm what is the function of variable arm it plays an important role in the recognition of amino acyl trna synthetase fine the variable arm plays an important role in the recognition of amino acyl trna synthetase all the trna share the common structure they have the same secondary structures okay you have to remember this amino acyl trna synthetase because this enzyme is important for the charging of trna charging of trna will be done when there will be the attachment of amino acid and there will be the need of atp and amino acyl trna synthetase will uh, is an important enzyme which will uh, be responsible in, uh, responsible for the charging of trna and this enzyme will be recognized by the variable loop variable arm a new class of trna has been now recognized it has been discovered which act as a adaptive molecule for cellulose cysteine in general we are having the 20 amino acids in our cell which are naturally present inside our body but a 21st amino acid is cellulose cysteine and the class 2 trna are acting as the adapter for the cellulose cysteine each type of amino has i said has its own type of trna but when the trna that are specific for same amino acid like one trna is specific for glycine and there is other trna which is uh, specific for uh, glycine as well uh, these uh, trna will be called as iso accepting trna and will be written as trna glycine 1 trna glycine 2 so that's all about supercoaling and trna in the next session we will start from the application we will cover the transcription and translation as well so stay tuned and please like the video if you like it share it and subscribe the channel thank you stay safe